All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about attenuators. I was fortunate enough to get these donated by Generous Ham to the Smoke and Ape channel. And uh, what these are are mini circuit attenuators. And so let's take a closer look at this and see what we can see. Oh, we had it for a second. There you go. You can see the branding mini circuit. The part number is 15542. Now these have been discontinued and we'll take a look at what the replacement is for them. But these are a little bit older. These types of attenuators are about $25 to $30 each if you're lucky enough to find them. And so some of the things that we want to talk about is these are rated for 50 ohms. You might see some that are rated for something different like 75 ohms, for example. This is the VAT3. Uh, and so what it is, it's a 3 dB attenuator. Now, in case you don't know, what an attenuator does is, is that it reduces or weakens a signal. And the reason you want to do this is, is that maybe you have a strong signal that is coming into an environment like a radio. And you want to put some attenuation there to make it a little bit weaker so you don't have overmodulation or overload. Strong signals sometimes can be difficult uh, to hear or interpret. The other thing is, is that you may want to characterize uh, the output of a device like an amateur radio into something like a spectrum analyzer or an oscilloscope and look at the quality of the signal. So things like spectrum analyzers work on really, really, really low signals. So you might want to transmit your radio at a higher wattage and then attenuate that signal down to something your spectrum analyzer can handle. And then that way you can do your analysis. Transform your electronic ideas into reality with PCBWay.com. PCBWay offers premium PCB manufacturing and assembly services at unbeatable prices. Enjoy rapid turnaround times and dependable worldwide shipping. Whether it's a prototype or a full-scale production, PCBWay.com is your go-to partner. Visit PCBWay.com today and make your innovations happen. Now, attenuators come in all shapes and sizes, and here's a really big one. I've done a video on this in the past. Just search for smoke and ape and attenuators, and you can see that. But you can see on this one, this is rated for 100 watts, and it does a reduction of 40 dB. And so you would use this on something like an HF radio where you want to pull that signal down. And then you can actually even couple these together in series, and we'll take a look at how you do that to further reduce your signal. These mini circuit attenuators that I got come in different values. So here is one that is a 30 dB attenuator. And here's one that is a 10 dB attenuator. And I believe somewhere around here we have a 6 dB attenuator. In the event that we couple this, if I take the 30 and the 6 and I connect, oh, this is a 10 and a 6, I connect them together, now I have 16 dB of attenuation. But you need to consider the power from your source. Now, before I got these, I used to use these cheap Chinese attenuators. You can see this one here is rated for 2 watts. And this one is another 2 watt attenuator. And this one is 30 dB. And I believe this one here is 20 dB. 15. And you can see one end is an SMA male connector. And the other end is an SMA female connector. Now, I may have forgotten to mention it, but these mini circuits are rated at 1 watt. These attenuators look a lot like dummy loads, and so here's a dummy load. And you can use this to test other aspects of your radio if you transmit a signal in here. This will prohibit your signal from being spread or broadcast or transmitted across the ether, as they say. So basically this replaces an antenna, but it doesn't radiate any RF. Maybe just a little, but not enough to be noticeable. All right, so what we're looking at here is called a spectrum analyzer, and it allows you to look at power of a signal on the vertical scale and frequency along the horizontal scale. This one is the SAA3032X. On my bench here, I've got the 3021X. The only difference is, is that this one has a frequency span that goes up to 3.2 gigahertz, and mine goes up to 2.1. The reason I didn't use a picture of the 3021 is because I couldn't find one that was uh, this clear. But what we're going to do is have a red arrow pointing towards what's called a TG source. And this is called a tracking generator. And what a tracking generator does is it produces a signal that comes out of that port and through a device. The device under test or DUT is what it's called. In this case, our DUT is going to be our attenuator. And then we take that and we feed it into the RF input port, which you can see here. 
And what happens is, is that as the sweep goes across the frequency span that you're looking at, a signal is produced at the same rate. And that way it allows them to be in concert or synchronized and allows you to see what the effects of the device under test, in this case our attenuator, has based off of the signal that's being produced. So when we set up our spectrum analyzer, the first thing we need to do is run a wire that is connecting the TG source to the RF input. And we do this to calibrate the signal and make sure that what is coming out of the tracking generator is expected correctly by the input. Once we've done this process called normalization, we put the attenuator or device under test in line with the cables that we're running. And here you can see one of the mini circuits, a 10 dB attenuator. And that's how we're going to test these things. Now, here's an example of where I've coupled two attenuators together. You can see I've got a ham radio. It's a Yaesu FT70D, fantastic radio. And that radio puts out about 5 watts. And that 5 watts is greater than the 1 watt rating we have on the mini circuit inline attenuators. So what we do is we put a little bit of a larger attenuator in place. And here you can see it's a 10 watt attenuator and it is 10 dB. So the signal coming out of the Yaesu is immediately attenuated by 10 dB. And then we have another attenuator in place. I didn't see which one this one is. Let's say it's another 10 dB. So what that means is the signal coming out of the Yesu will be attenuated by 20 dB before it goes into this spectrum analyzer, which is a tiny SA Ultra. And that will reduce the overall power of our signal to something that's a little bit more manageable. Now, I really didn't test this. In the real world, I would have more attenuation than 20 dB if I was testing the scenario. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to show how you can hook these up. Now, when you do this and you couple these attenuators together, you always, always want the highest power rating to be connected to your radio. In the event that this radio did put out more than 10 watts, I would need more than a 10 watt attenuator connected to the radio's output. So here is a PDF I found on the mini circuits 15542 SMA attenuators. And it says for rugged and reliable repeatable attenuation when accuracy is key, our customers have come to rely on mini circuits fixed. Precision attenuators feature stainless steel constru construction, I can't speak, precision attenuation from 3 to 30 dB and SMA connectors for 50 ohm systems. And it goes down, and then here's actually a spec sheet or um, a document that talks about these. Also, these are the attenuators that have replaced these. These are the newer models, so if you were going to buy something, you would look for the FW-15A+. And uh, here's a photo for illustration purposes only, so yours may look a little different. You can see these are about $25 to $30 a piece. It's going to depend on where you get them from. Okay, here we have a remote control session of our spectrum analyzer. It is starting at zero hertz and stops at one gigahertz. Now the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna turn on our tracking generator that we spoke about earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click the tab for that. And I'm gonna set the tracking generator state on. When I do that, you're going to see the noise floor. And it has changed and right now it is at negative 20 dB. So what I want to do is I want to normalize this and that should smooth that out. And now it's been normalized and our reference has been set to 0 dBm. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a 30 dB attenuator in line like we saw with the picture. And now what you can see is that our floor is at negative 30 dB. We have a little bit of noise on there. We might be able to smooth that out with some averaging. But uh, that attenuator looks to work as expected from DC to what we would say 1 gigahertz. So zero, so 0 hertz to 1 gigahertz. So what we're going to do now is we're going to remove this attenuator and add another. The one we have added is a 6 dB attenuator. So let's go ahead and set a marker. And now you can see a marker here at point number one. And up here you can see that it is negative 6.19, 6.2 dB. Let's try another one. I am connecting a 10 dB attenuator right now. And we can see that our sweep is at the negative 10 line. So that seems to be right. And our marker is negative 10.19, 10.2. Let's go ahead and try the 3 dB attenuator. 
Now the 3db attenuator is in line and you can see that on our marker we are negative 3.193.2. .3 okay the last attenuator is another 10db attenuator so let's get this one connected. And we are right where we expect. Okay, here's an NOV and a saver. And what we have here is sweep control. We're running sweep from 5 megahertz to 1,000 1, megahertz, which is a gigahertz. And we have this divided into 25 segments. That gives us more data points for our measurement. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit sweep. And this is going to run. And on the bottom, we can see the impact of SWR. Okay, on the bottom, what we can see is the SWR for this particular device. It gets a little noisy towards the end, but I think that's to be expected. Anyhow, if I run a marker along here, right here we are at 1.05, which is pretty low. And then let's go over here. It looks like our peak is somewhere right around here. And over here at our peak, it looks like we are 1.185 to 1. Overall, that's not really that bad. It's pretty good. So what I want to do now is I want to take off the dummy load and introduce one of the attenuators. Okay, what we're going to do now is we are going to set this sweep as a reference, and then we're going to run the sweep again and see if there's any difference. And we went ahead and we ran the sweep, and we really don't see a difference here. What I want to do is I want to change the scale on this to see if we can see anything uh, at a more granular level. Okay, by changing that, we can see that we do have a little bit of increase in our SWR there. Let's take a quick look at our Smith chart. Okay, taking a look at our Smith chart, we can also see the impact here as there is some increase or drift from the 50 ohm system impedance as we increase in frequency. But again, that's to be expected. I'm not going to test all these on camera right now because I don't think we have time for it, but I wanted to show how we can do this. Anyhow, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching. It's greatly appreciated.